Some people have been asking us whatever happened to Katie's dad. I do seem to recall that we mentioned him in the first story, as well as a family dog, and we've forgotten all about them ever since. Well, this story might explain things just a bit. And by the way, Bertie says that it's rather more romantic than usual. Katie was just a little bit put out. Her mother was going to the theatre without her. This was very strange, because Katie and her mum always did everything together. Great Aunt Chloe had come to stay the night. You wouldn't want to be a gooseberry, she told a glum-looking Katie. No, thought Katie. I wouldn't want to be a strawberry either. What strange things my relatives say sometimes! It was only later, when Katie was lying in bed, that she twigged. Oh, I get it. Mum's found a boyfriend. That's why she's been so secretive recently. A moonbeam did a little dance on the window sill to say, "Yes, Katie, you slow coach." Why didn't you think of that before? You see, Katie's dad had upped and left some years ago. He was a professor at the Institute of Paranormal Phenomena, and he thought that his home life was just a bit too much, like his work life. So it was probably about time that Katie's mum found another man. At breakfast time, Katie said to her mum, "How's your evening?" But all she could get out of her was, "It was a very nice midsummer's night dream." It was only two days later that Katie's suspicions were finally confirmed. She was standing in row for school assembly when her best friend Isis whispered, "Katie, is it true that there's a Mister New in your mum's life?" "Search me," said Katie, her cheeks reddening. "I'd be the last person she would tell. Anyway, why do you ask?" But then they had to be silent, because the headmistress was climbing up onto her podium. All through the long assembly, full of boring notices and school sports results, Katie fidgeted uneasily. Eventually, as they shuffled out to the classroom, Isabel sidled up to her and said, "Everyone except you knows that your mum is going out with an estate agent." An estate agent? You really didn't know. Asked Isis, rather baffled. My mum thought you were moving house because she kept on seeing your mum popping into the estate agent's office. Then she saw her hanging onto his arm and laughing as they came out of the park. Katie went bright red. She didn't know why she felt so humiliated, but she did. And he's Indian too," said Isabel. So. Said Katie defensively, "Nothing wrong with that," said Isabel. "But there's plenty wrong with selling houses. My dad says that estate agents are slimy toads. He says that you can tell if an estate agent is lying because his mouth is open." Katie wasn't just angry with her mother; she was a seething cauldron of rage. That evening, she exploded with fury and tears. You're romancing with an estate agent, and you don't say a word to me. The whole school knows about it, except for me, and it's just so, so humiliating. I'm so sorry, darling," said her mother, quite white with shock. "It's all very early days, and I didn't want to say anything because most probably it will all come to nothing." Okay, mum, I forgive you. So tell me about Mister New. 
Well, his name is Shumash, her mother said, and I like him because he's very spiritual. A spiritual estate agent, thought Katie. I bet. And then another obvious thought popped into her head. And I don't suppose you've mentioned to him that we're witches. Of course not, said her mother pertly. As soon as a man gets a hint of that, he runs off like a scared rabbit. He knows I sell magical things, of course, but he thinks they are just nice spiritual products. You know, mandrake bath aromas and, and nettle teas. He has no idea about the stuff I keep at the back of the shop. You mean like broomsticks and packets of frozen spiders? Well, yes, I wouldn't show him those, would I? Now look, Katie, you'll have to meet him soon. He's a really lovely, lovely man, and I do so hope you will like him. But not a hint of magic. Do you promise faithfully? Katie shuffled and thought. Why would I want to do magic for him anyway? And she said, Yes, of course, Mum. It was getting towards the end of the summer term, and that meant that sports day was coming up. It was the one school event a year when as many dads as mums came to watch and support their children. And it was a time when Katie's mum felt especially single. She imagined that people were thinking, she's on her own because she's a witch and nobody normal would want to live with her. She made a big decision. She asked Shumash to come with her to sports day. Everybody would see him. Nobody could say that he was a secret in her life. When Katie was lining up to take part in the 100 metre relay race, she heard someone call out, Go on, Katie! She looked up and saw an Indian man sitting next to her mum. She thought, that's him! And as she took the baton and ran off, she was thinking, he doesn't look that bad after all. Katie didn't win any medals. Even if she had done, people would have accused her of cheating with magic. By tradition, the last race of the day was a special one for the fathers. They all pretended not to care who won, but in fact, some of them were quite competitive about it. In the weeks before, they had been training in the park, so as to look good in front of their families. Isis's mum, who was also single, said to Shumash, Are you going to take part? And Katie's mum said, Yes, Katie would like that, which just goes to show how quite often parents don't understand their children at all. I'm not really a sportsman at all, said Shumash modestly. But as two women were urging him on, he agreed to join the lineup. He wasn't even wearing running shoes, just sandals. Oh no, thought Katie when she saw him stand up. Please don't do that. You don't look like much of an athlete. And you are not my dad. Mrs Hatworth fired the starter's gun. And the dad sprinted off for one lap of the 400 metre track. At first, Shumash looked like he was going to be left behind. Samantha's father was out in front, bounding along on long legs, and Susan's more stocky dad was in second place. But on the final bend, Shumash started to accelerate. You should have seen his face as he ran through the winning tape, as if he was flying. He was as astonished as anyone. Katie looked up at her mum in the spectator's stand. She had never seen her quite so excited and not really very ladylike. 
She was jumping up and down and waving her fist and shouting, Shumash! Shumash! Oh no, how embarrassing, thought Katie. I don't know what's got into her. That's not like Mum at all. Shumash jogged over to Katie and said, Pleased to meet you, Katie. Your mum's told me so much about you. Katie didn't really know what to say, so she replied, Well done in the race. I'm sure I wouldn't run like that normally, he said. Your mum inspired me. She's such a special woman. Everything seems to go right for me when she's around. I trust it does for you too, Katie just smiled. Shumash said, Well, lovely to speak to you at long last. Have a blessed day. And Katie thought, I suppose he said that because he's spiritual. After school, Katie said to her mother in the car, Shumash was very speedy and her mum smiled and looked happy. I don't suppose he had any help, mused Katie, of the magical kind. By the way her mum went red, Katie understood everything. And what other help have you been giving him? He said everything's been going well for him ever since he met you. Oh, you know, just a little nudge along for his business, when his customers aren't quite sure about buying a house. A little sprinkling of magic can make up their minds. Katie was horrified. Mum, you'd never do that to your own customers. I know, sighed her mother. I can't stop myself. He's just such a nice guy. Katie shook her head and thought. She can't help herself. She can only help others. The following Saturday, Katie's mum was going to meet Shumash's family. Mum, why are you in such a fluster? Asked Katie as she watched her mother smudge her lipstick. Oh, I think it's make or break, she replied. His grandmother is the head of the family and she's very traditional. I'm not Indian and Shumash is younger than me. I don't have a dowry. She laughed nervously as she said that. She'll probably say I'm not right for him. So? What she says matters a lot to Shumash, replied her mum. We'll just use a little magic, said Katie. Oh, I couldn't do that. I want her to accept me as I am, not because she's under a spell. And Katie sighed. She knew her mum was just hopeless. And she wasn't entirely surprised when three hours later she came back through the front door in silence, went into the kitchen, sat down and burst into tears. Great Aunt Chloe put her arm around her and said, Oh, come, dear, it can't have been that bad. What happened? His grandmother told him I'm a witch, she said. She knew right away. He's furious. That you're a witch? asked Katie. No, that I didn't tell him, sobbed her mother. He says he can't trust me if I keep such an important thing secret from him. Oh, Mum, sighed Katie. If only you knew how to break a secret. When Katie woke up in the morning, she knew that there was something she felt pleased about, but she couldn't remember what it was. Oh, yes, she thought as she pulled back the curtain. Mum got dumped by Shumash. In all truth, she hadn't exactly liked Shumash coming into their lives. There was nothing wrong with him, apart from the fact that he was an estate agent, but he took up 
all of her mum's attention. At breakfast, Katie's mother was unusually cheerful. She was even singing a little song while she made the tea. Don't be scared of Halloween or the things that go unseen. There's no need to feed the fear when the ghosts and ghouls are near. Katie was amazed. Anyone would think she was glad she'd been dumped, she thought. And then she said, You seem like you're in a good mood. Oh, well, you know, darling, life goes on, replied her mum. And Katie could see that her eyes were a touch watery, and she immediately felt guilty for being glad that her romance was at an end. It was the weekend. Katie was going to the pony farm with her best friend Isis, and her mum would be opening up the shop. Cheer up, mum said Katie as they set off in the car. Perhaps Shumash will pop in to see you and say it was all a big misunderstanding. He'd better not, said her mother. I've already sent a text telling him to stay away. But I thought you liked him, said Katie, quite baffled. I do, but don't you see... We witches can't ever get too close to ordinary people. It never works. They just can't cope with the whole idea of magic. Shumash is a lovely guy, but it's for the best that we don't see each other. Even his own grandmother freaks him out. She's not even a witch. Just a tiny bit, you know, psychic. I know the sort said Katie. I think Mrs Hepworth, our headmistress, is like that. Listen, darling, don't you worry about it. We're happy together, aren't we? Let's go to the cinema tonight, shall we? Oh, yes, said Katie, who loved going to the movies with her mother. But that evening, the only thing on at the Odeon was a romantic comedy called Laurie and Rory, about two star-crossed lovers in the music industry. Katie's mother wasn't really in the mood for that sort of film, so they stayed at home and watched celebrity dancing on TV instead. Sunday was on the dreary side. Katie did her homework and her mum swept up leaves in the garden. Katie looked out of her bedroom window and saw her sitting on the garden seat with her head in her hands, thinking deeply. Katie's cat Solomon said, Mah. She's not over him yet, you know. And Katie said, Oi, you naughty cat, you're not supposed to speak. And Solomon leapt off the bed and ran out before she could put the silent spell on him. On Monday night, Katie did something a little bit naughty. She looked into her mother's crystal ball and saw that she had two Facebook messages from Shumash. Her mother hadn't opened either of them. He still likes her, thought Katie, and I know that she likes him, even if she is ignoring him. I know she does. On Tuesday, her mother actually admitted it. You know what I miss about him most, she said, as she pasted magic spells into her recipe book. He made me feel normal, not a freak, or at least he did, until he found out about me being a witch. She looked so sad when she said the last part that Katie had to put her arm around her and say, Oh, Mum! The following Wednesday was Halloween. It's the time of year when witches are meant to feel the best vibes and fly around full of high jinks. The shop was full of customers buying magical props and costumes. But Katie's mum couldn't help looking double glum, even as she rung up the cash register. Katie changed into her witch's costume. Of course she was wearing party sort of clothes, a pointed hat and a cloak with moon shapes on it. No self-respecting witch would go around like that these days, except for a joke. Bye mum, I'm going to Isis's house, she said.
She and her best friend were going trick-or-treating together. But as she stepped out of the shop, she had an impulse. She decided to pop into Schumacher's estate agency. She knew her mum would simply hate her to talk to him. But she also knew it was just silly for two people who liked each other so much to stay apart. As she came in, a long-faced woman looked up from behind her computer and said, The sweets are on the desk. Don't grab the lot, mind. We're expecting a few more witches and ghouls tonight. Actually, said Katie, I haven't come to trick or treat. Even though I am wearing this silly hat, I've come to see Shumash. Oh, said the woman. Who shall I say is here? Katie, said Katie. The woman pressed a button on her phone. Shumash, there's a girl here dressed as a witch. Her name's Katie. She says she's come to see you. Shumash opened his office door. Well, 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 he said. Is this a trick or treat? Neither, said Katie. I've come for a chat. Shumash ushered her into his room. She sat down opposite his desk. I suppose you've come to talk about your mum, he said. Yes, said Katie. I've come to ask, um, do you really mind that she's a witch? Shumash sighed. Well, I really like your mum. We've got on so well together, I thought we looked at the world through, you know, the same eyes. And I liked you too, of course, Katie. But yes, I suppose I do mind that she's a witch. But why, said Katie, it's not her fault. She was born that way. I mean, there are worse things than being a bit witchy, you know. Like what? Like being a vampire, for instance. Shumash felt his throat and laughed. Well, I suppose that would be worse, he said. Look, let me explain. All my life I've been annoyed by witchcraft. I suppose you know that my grandmother thinks she's a witch. As long as I can remember, she was always doing some strange sort of hocus-pocus. Like she was sprinkling smelly oils around the house to ward off evil spirits or, more specifically, our bad neighbour. Then he had a fire in his house and she said that that proved her magic worked. On Halloween, like tonight, our whole home would reek of garlic. Not sure why. And then she would get an idea that somebody or other had the evil eye. Unfortunately, one of them was my best friend's dad. So I was banned from going around to his house. I wasn't allowed to play with my buddy anymore. He never understood why. That's when I really decided that all this witchcraft business was just silly. In fact, it's more than silly. It's completely irrational. And it's it's harmful. He said this last part with quite some feeling. He was tearing up a post-it as he spoke. Oh, I see, said Katie. Doesn't sound like she's a very good witch. I mean, my mum's not like her at all. Well, that's why I was so shocked, said Shumash. Your lovely mother seems too clever to believe in magic. You know, when I was 16, I went to see a psychiatrist. I said, Doctor, I think I'm crazy. He asked me some questions and called in the other doctors to see me. At the end, he said, There's nothing wrong with you. You're perfectly normal. It's your family that's crazy. You should get them to come round here. So you see, I really don't want to get too involved with more of that insane sort of stuff. I've had quite enough of it already. Does my head in, you know? Honestly, we're not like that, protested Katie. But Shumash was getting carried away now. He opened a drawer. I haven't told you the worst, he said. Look at this. He pulled out an estate agent's description of a house. Katie could see from the pictures that it was a sumptuous and elegant building made of large sandy-coloured blocks of stone. Pillars held up the porch. Most striking of all, the French doors opened into a stunning view of the sea. 
A few years ago, my family wanted to buy a house by the sea. I'm an estate agent, so you might think that they would have listened to my opinion. But no, they found this place. It's lovely, of course. There's only one thing wrong with it. It's on top of a cliff. Every year the wind and the sea wears away the chalk and the house gets closer and closer to the edge. Eventually it will just fall into the sea. I begged them not to buy it, but Grandmother said she could use her magic powers to stop the cliff eroding. She even said she could make it grow back. I mean, can you believe it? They trusted her in her crazy magic so much that they actually bought a house that is going to disappear beneath the waves. It's so frustrating. Well, I suppose, said Katie thoughtfully, that if my mum and I concentrated really hard, we might be able to move it back about 50 metres. Would that help? At first, Shumash looked puzzled, and then he chuckled nervously. Oh, I see. You're kidding, right? Yeah, just my little joke, said Katie. Well, it's time for me to go trick or treating. So, uh, thanks for chat. Sorry, your grandmother's not much of a witch. Don't judge my mum by her. Honestly, she's quite different. Katie picked up her coat and started to go. Shumash said, "Look, Katie, tonight I'm going to. Well, it's really quite ironic, really. A Halloween fancy dress party." Do you think you could persuade your mum to come with me? I don't know, said Katie, but I'll try. And she ran back to her mother's shop. Mum, she said, Shumash wants to take you out tonight to a Halloween party. You've got to go dressed as a witch. Her mum looked at Katie for a few seconds, trying to take in what she just said. Don't you see? pleaded Katie. Just make a joke of it. Laughter is the best magic of all. Go on, Mum. You know you really miss him. This is your chance. It'll be hilarious. And her Mum smiled sincerely for the first time in a week and said, Well, (laughs) that is actually quite funny. Yes, Katie, I'll go. When Katie had finished her round of trick-or-treats with her friends, she went back home. Her mum was on the way out, dressed up as a very glamorous witch. She looks quite ridiculous, said Great Aunt Chloe, who was staying with them. No, you don't, said Katie to her mum. You look beautiful. And her mother left with a serene expression on her face. When she was gone, Katie and her great-aunt went into the kitchen for some pumpkin soup. Chloe said, Halloween gives people all sorts of silly ideas about witches. It's not for us to go around dressing up in over-the-top costumes. Leave that to the ignorant folk. And Katie replied, Actually, people have funny ideas about witches anyway and she related everything Shumash had told her about his grandmother. Ridiculous woman, said Aunt Chloe. She's a bit psychic, like lots of people. And she thinks she's a witch. No wonder the poor boy has such a low opinion of us. And then a slightly wicked glint came into Great Aunt Chloe's eye. Katie knew that look. It meant one thing, and that was trouble. I know what we should do, said Aunt Chloe. Get the crystal ball and find that house for me. We'll get on our broomsticks, fly over there and move it. Tonight's the night to do it. It's Halloween. And besides, your mother's out and can't stop us. And Katie thought that that was one of the most deliciously naughty ideas she had heard in her whole life. At quarter to midnight, Aunt Chloe and Katie landed their broomsticks in the field behind the house that was about to fall into the sea. Katie shivered with cold. Here, have a super-strength magical mint, said her great-aunt, 
It will warm you up. The salt air filled Katie's nostrils. The sound of the sea crashed against the rocks. Katie could even feel the moisture on her skin. Behind the house, she could see the silhouette of a large oak tree. In the house itself, there were one or two yellowy lights on. Well, first things first. That tree's in the way, said Chloe. She pointed her broomstick at it and whoosh! The tree moved into the next field. Katie thought that surely somebody would hear, but nobody came out. Perhaps they thought it was the sound of the wind. Let's dig a trench for the foundation, said Chloe. Django Mango, JCB. And a whole load of earth swept out of the ground behind the house and formed a dark hill. Still, nobody inside seemed to notice. It was dark after all. I'll need your help for the next part, said Chloe. This is real magic. No footling around. Concentrate really, really hard. Can you feel the psychic chains around the house? Now pull with your mind. Pull! And Katie closed her eyes and heaved with all her concentration. There was a terrible creaking sound like a tree falling in the forest. She opened her eyes in fright, expecting to see the house coming apart. But no, it was sliding elegantly back into the huge trench that Chloe had dug with her spell. Two minutes later, it stopped moving. Just a bit of tidying up to do, said Chloe, and whoosh! The earth that she had dug up from behind the house filled in the chasm that was now at the front. Of course, by now the people inside had noticed and were in a terrific panic. Four figures came out of a side door. Katie could see that one of them was elderly and had a stick. They got into a four by four car and sped off down the drive as fast as they could. Well, 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 that's gratitude for you, said Chloe. We saved their house from falling into the sea. And they don't even stop to say thank you. I expect they were terrified, said Katie laughing. There was no time to hang around. They had to get back home before Katie's mum returned from the party. In the morning her mother was in a happy mood and Katie felt it was genuine. As they were going out of the door for her school, her mother's phone rang. Hello, Shumash, said Katie's mum. Oh, yes, I had a lovely time. What did you say? Oh, how strange. No, I don't know anything about that. I promise, honestly, nothing to do with me. Come on, mum, said Katie nervously. We'll be late for school, 